for the nice introduction. So now I'm gonna uh, share my screen. Can everyone see my presentation? Yes. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, so uh, thank you for having me today. And I'm very excited being here to talk about reproducible research in anthropology. And I will mainly focus on data analysis in writing papers using our Markdown with Git version control to make research convenient. And this is also an approach that I have been using for writing my uh, PhD papers and also my dissertation. So, um, Next, um, before um, getting started, just uh, some more few words about myself. So um, I'm an archeologist and I'm very interested in data science. I just recently graduated from the University of Washington and I started to use R um, to do data analysis when I was in my second or third year of PhD. And then um, after um, a few years, Later, um, when I uh, finished data uh, collection, I decided to write um, my papers using R Markdown. And um, so um, I'm very interested in data science, and I also co found the Anthro Data Science, which is a group consisting of anthropologists who use R for data analysis and share our skills through workshops. And if you're interested in, you can check um, the URL link over here. So for today's um, presentation, I will firstly um, briefly introduce reproducible research, why it is important. And then I will talk about the best practices of writing papers using our Markdown. Compendia for a publication with Git version control to manage our versions. And also talk a little about um, how do we share our works through preprint services. So what is reproducible research? So a reproducible research, that means we um, make our analytical process transparent um, for everyone. And it's part of an open science approach that stresses free public availability of research data, methods, and publications. That means, um, so the three elements is open data, open methods, and open access. And among those practice, open methods are the key to improving um, our research reproducibility. So um, why it is important? Because um, when we take this approach to make our work reproducible, then also means we keep track of how we generate our results. Because we write down the codes and everyone can easily see the step on how we um, do the data analysis and also enables others to uh, examine our research process. So in a wrong wrong, it will enhance research transparency and credibility and also um, increase collaborations between researchers. And also another advantage is improve equality in participation in research because we make our data and codes uh, openly available to everyone. So um, anyone who is involved in this research or even outside our projects, they can easily access to it. So here is some concept of um, uh, reproducible research. So um, in this um, diagram, you can see um, it's a uh, reproducibility spectrum. So on the left-hand side is a conventional way of doing research. That means we only provide tests um, in our final outputs. So in this kind of um, uh, publication, because there is only text, it's very hard to know how um, people generate their results. So in order to get our work reproducible, um, there are a couple ways we can do it first. In addition to test, we can include data. And also we can include the code that we use to do data analysis and with version control, how we manage our um, versions. 
when we make any changes. And um, in this present presentation, I will um, talk more about um, Git and GitHub. That is the way I have been using to keep track my changes and also collab collaborate with my co-authors. So once you uh, include test data code all together in one single uh, document, then um, you make your work reproducible. And also another important thing um, is after you publish your paper, you can upload your preprint to preprint services. And it will be ideal if you can put a link um, in your papers to uh, indicate where uh, other people can find your code and also make your code licensed. So this is a concept how we um, go from 0% reproducibility to 100% reproducibility um, by including test data and code all together in one single document. So um, in this presentation, I will uh, talk about the best um, practices using our Markdown Compendium for paper writing. So what does a uh, research compendium mean? It means um, we include the three important elements that um, I just talked about. It's test, data, and code all in one single document. And also in this research compendium, we do data analysis and we generate plots. We can also save those plots into a folder. So it will be, uh, it will be very easy for me, uh, like for us to um, put those figures into your markdown file. And also you can um, use Git and GitHub for check your changes for checking your changes and also communicate and collaborate with your co-authors. And finally, after you finish your manuscript, you can make your uh, papers upload to uh, online prepend services and share it with the public. So um, now I'm going to talk more about reproducible research using R Markdown. So R Markdown, um, if you are familiar with um, R, maybe you have uh, heard of it already. So R Markdown is a popular tool for um, reproducible research. It is a format for writing uh, reproducible dynamic reports with R. With R. And uh, dynamic documents can be continuously updated so um, you, after you finish your writing, you can render it into um, some other types of files such as Word documents or PDF or so on. And after you um, render it, you can see some outputs will be generated from your code. So for example, this is uh, um, how it looks like in your R Markdown. You have test you, and you have a code for um, your data analysis or um, data visualization. And after you need it, you render it and all of those um, words and the code will be converted into this format with plain text and the figure embedded into your documents. So here is another example demonstrate you how um, it looks like in our Markdown. So our Markdown combines um, plain text and embedded code chunks. So here you can see the left-hand side is uh, our Markdown file, and you can use hashes to indicate headings. The numbers of hashes in front of the word will determine the levels of the heading. And after the heading, you put your um, text over here and you can also see um, uh, we can use some syntax to change font style for example um, the two stars um, in front of these words and two stars after it it will change this word into um, into a bold font so this is how we write our test over here, and then we can also in, uh, include code chunk. So code chunk usually um, start and end with three backticks. 
like this. And um, you can see after three backticks, we will put a curly brackets. The, here is to indicate um, you can put the name of your R code chunk. And this is useful when we, um, when we want to find it because when we um, doing this work in our markdown, we may include many code chunks. And so it's better to name it. And so later we can find it easily. And this is some uh, code to indicate um, for example, here is to is um, echo equals false. So that means um, it means it can prevent code, but not the final result from appearing in your finished file. So if you're familiar with data visualization, you can see the code um, is um, based on the library ggplot2, which is very useful and convenient to make um, plots. And here is um, use ggplot2 and code to make some um, plot, uh, box plots. So after we finish our um, our coding and text in our Markdown, we can render it by clicking on this knit button. So after you click on that, then you will see the final result will be um, generated with this um, knit format. You can see our markdown over here, which is the heading that we specified with two hashes and the test after that. And also the knit button knit work over here. It's uh, in both um, fonts because of the syntax that we use in our markdown. And also we can see the nice uh, visualization of box plots, which is automatically generated um, from your code. So this is the uh, the basic um, how it works basically uh, how it works in our Markdown that we uh, we write our text and code and finally uh, convert it into uh, outputs that you can specify. For example, you can make it as a Word document or a PDF. So now I'm gonna uh, demonstrate a workflow of reproducible research by using um, my own example, which is my uh, second paper, um, focus on standardization of ceramic shape. And um, so the whole uh, paper is written by our Markdown. And normally in my papers, I will have a section to indicate how other researchers can find the data and code for this research. And I think this is very important to communicate um, that your uh, research is fully reproducible. And also I think it's um, a good way to um, make your code and data available for everyone to inspect, to increase the research credibility. So this is a view um, of our markdown. So in our markdown, you will see something like this. And after I knit it, then it will generate an output. I normally generate it. Uh, I normally um, convert the our markdown into Word documents because it will be easier for me to uh, submit to to journal. And um, here is uh, our studio. I use R Studio to, to work on R Markdown. And if you're familiar with R Studio, this is the typical um, layout on the um, left, upper left corner. This is um, the R Markdown file. And you can see, um, so normally you will create a file and here I choose R Markdown, but you can also choose, choose like R script by uh, choose the file types over here. And this is, um, so when you have our markdown file at the beginning, you will see these things, this is called YAML header. And I will talk more about it later. And in addition to this our markdown file, you can see uh, at the bottom here is the place where you generate um, when you run your code, you will save your R objects over here. 
this is your environment, our environment. And the right hand side on the top, which is console. So console is the place where you run your code. And also um, here you can uh, you can run your code chunk your in your R markdown, or you can also uh, run your code separately in console. Um, at the bottom, here is the place where you manage the data and code or your final figures and papers. So this is a concept of compendium. That means we combine all of the materials we, we need all together, like code data and in data folder, you can put your raw data over here or the wrapped data based on your code. And also you can generate um, figures and stores in the figure um, folders because this will be useful um, when you write academic paper because um, they have some uh, like some requirements for your uh, figure resolutions. So you can um, write some code to set up your uh, figure resolutions and also make it as individual files that you can uh, use it and um, later. And here is uh, another folder, which is code paper. Here you will put our Markdown file and also the uh, finishing paper generated from your uh, Markdown file. And in my case is Word documents. So this is the um, general layout of our Markdown, uh, our studio when I work on my uh, research. So an R Markdown file, normally includes three important elements. First is YAML header, and second is uh, documents contents, which is uh, the plain text, and also code chunks that um, include code for data analysis or data visualization. So here you can see um, this is YAML header. So YAML header is enclosed by three dashes. You can see three dashes here, and between this uh, those three dashes, we can put information, um, which is our metadata, such as uh, title and author and the date. And you can specify your output over here because I use Word. So you can see I use book down and specify uh, my document type. And of course you can change it to any other types that you uh, prefer, such as PDF, so you can make make some changes over here. And you can also, um, so you can see, um, you can have a reference documents. So this allow you to uh, customize things such as margins and other formatting features if you include your favorite reference documents. And also you can specify bibliography, which will be um, the, which will generate a full list of reference placed at the end of this document. And to have a bibliography, you will need a big text file that stores your references. So big text file is, um, big text is a, a widely bibliography management tool in that text. And later uh, I will uh, show you some examples. So, so you can uh, include abstracts and keywords, highlights. So here is this uh, place where you put your metadata. And normally you will see this, um, you will uh, include this YAML header at the beginning of your R Markdown. So the next thing is, uh, so here I will talk more about how to combine um, plain text and code chunk using my example. So as I mentioned before, you will use a hash to indicate your subheading. And after subheading, here is your uh, plain text. And you can also see uh, this symbol. So here, the green, green, code, green text over here, here is a note and this note won't uh, when showed up in your final outputs, just for you to uh, make some note about your um, progress or about some information about these um, paragraphs. So here you can see uh, I put test and I also have code chunk. 
this is a core chunk to make a PCA um, principal component analysis by plot. And here you can see the R code chunk also uh, includes the caption for the figures. So the caption will, uh, you can see, will start with this uh, word fig doc cap equals, and here put your captions you like over here. So um, because um, in this projects, um, I use a different way to, I create a R scripts to run to my um, R code and then save the figures in another, um, in that R script file. And then in this R Markdown, I just read the uh, figures into R Markdown. So after I finish the writing and embed the R code chunks, then I click on knit, then you can see the final output uh, is generated over here with the um, headings results and the text and also the figures that I um, I go into the R Markdown and then the captions over here. So there are also some um, more functions you can use. For example, you can write inline code to insert numbers. And I think this is very uh, useful because um, in a traditional way, when we uh, like use R to do some data analysis and save figures, and we use like Word documents to write test. So sometimes we may, um, we may make mistakes when we copy past the final results or when we update our original code, but we didn't update, update it in our Word documents. So there will be some inconsistent um, result. But if we write, uh, test and code all together in R Markdown, we can have this kind of inline code. So in this code chunk, you can see I read my data and then I do some uh, quick uh, calculation. I group them and calculate the number of each um, faces, then write uh, R code to assign the sum of the, so here is a pottery, pottery number. So I write a code to sum up the pottery numbers and assign it as a uh, objects, which is called total number. And after I finish the coding, later you can see um, this is the, the test where I include the inline codes. It start with uh, a backtick symbol and also end up with a backtick symbol. And in this um, space, you put R first and a space, then put your object name. So after you finish this, you need it, then you can see the final result, which is a number will show up in your um, output. This uh, 17.3 over here. And also you can do uh, cross-referencing. So um, for figures and tables, and it has specific uh, syntax, which is uh, you will put figure and this symbol ref, and in the parentheses you will put the uh, the name of your R code chunk. So do you remember we will um, name our each each code chunk? So this is a way to uh, specify which code chunk we want to include over here. And after we knit it, you can see it will convert it to a normal um, number figure of 5.1. And the number will automatically uh, generate it in, uh, according to the order of your code chunks. So in addition to, um, inline code and the referencing, we can also include um, the big text. So this is a way to read uh, reference into our, uh, our documents. So for example, um, here I just uh, demonstrate one uh, 
example of big text. So big text usually looks like this. It has specific format. And to do this, we need to uh, create a big text file first to store citation data we want to cite. And a citation entry in big text format looks like this. Um, when we want to cite it, we will insert the big text key for the reference in the documents. So for example, the uh, reference key over here is Marwick uh, 2018. So this is the key. And in our text, in our markdown, we will have brackets and then put the key with add sim symbol uh, in front of it. So in this way, our markdown will recognize it as a uh, inline citation. So uh, when the document is converted to its final output format, you can see the big text keys um, are replaced by a neat formatted citation like this. And those at the end of your documents, you will have a reference list with this citation. So now I'm gonna talk about uh, version control and research sharing using uh, data repositories. So Git and GitHub is um, some system that I have been using for uh, my PhD paper writings and also my dissertation. Git is a version control system that lets you manage and keep track your source code history and changes. And GitHub is a cloud-based hosting service that lets you manage uh, Git repository. And if you have open source projects that use Git, then GitHub is um, designed to help you better manage them. And here shows you the whole picture. How do uh, how do we um, upload? How do we save our changes and upload our changes to a remote server, GitHub? And first, you have to install Git in your R projects in your computer, and also make a GitHub repo repository. Then link your R projects to the existing GitHub repository. Uh, once you have done this, um, you want to, every time when you work on your Amazon, you want to save your changes, you can uh, make an action, which is called commit. So that means you record all your local changes into the Git database in your local machine, your computer. Then next thing is push it. So push means you upload your changes to a remote server. And in our case here is GitHub. And you can also do um, pull. So pull is to download from your remote server. So uh, let's say you have another computer and you want to work on your uh, R projects, but you didn't have your R projects in that computer. So you, then you can use this action to pull everything from your GitHub to your um, new computer. Or you can also, this is also very useful when you collaborate with your, um, with other researchers, with co-authors, then um, they can easily pull off your um, repository and or your changes by click on pull. Then it will uh, download everything to their computers. So, um, so this is a view of um, how you make uh, Git commit. So after you link your R projects to a GitHub repository, then you can see this Git button showing up in your uh, window. And every time when you want to uh, save your changes, just click on this button and you will see commit over here, click on it and another window will pop up. So um, that window will um, list of, of, of the changes you made. Um, for example, if you uh, changes some code in some files or change your um, text in our Markdown, then you will have many entries, many items. Then you just click on uh, which file you want to save and then leave some um, commit uh, message to remind you what uh, action you have done to your files. 
So that is a uh, Git button and commit action. So once you commit and push your um, push your changes, your of your data, so you can see this is the a view of my um, data file in our projects, and this is of those our our script for um, data analysis where I put my code over here. And after I push it, and um, you can see all of those files showing up in my remote uh, repository in GitHub. And you can see it's exactly the same. And this is an um, example shows you the uh, commit history. So in your GitHub repository, you can always click on history to uh, examine what changes you have done. And you can also see how I work with my co-authors, also my advisor um, uh, on those on these projects. And if you want to go back to some point in the past, you can also revert a specific commit to remove its changes from your branch. So I think this is very uh, convenient way to keep track your changes, or if you uh, regret you want to go back to previous version, you can also revert it. And this is um, shows you um, the readme file markdown in your GitHub uh, repository. And here is to give uh, readers some more information about your um, repository, for example, where they can, um, uh, how they can cite your paper and also to indicate how they, how they can download or install this repository. If you, if they want to inspect your code or run your code, this is a convenient way to provide information on GitHub repository. So, uh, so that's about um, Git at GitHub. And now I'm going to talk about a research sharing using prepared services. So once we have done our manuscript and submit it to journal, at any point during this process, we can uh, create a prepared. So which is a version of a scholarly paper before formal publication in a peer-reviewed journal. And we can make our preprints available and free online before or after a paper is published in a journal. So um, because normally um, it costs a lot um, if you, you are not in any organization or institution who, uh, who bought those um, journals, then you have to pay for it. But in this way, by sharing your preprints, everyone can easily access your uh, paper without, uh, without any cost. So I think this is a very good way to uh, make our paper available, openly available. And also it's a practice of open access that which is um, the approach of open science that I have been um, stick to. And so there are some prepared, uh, online prepared um, repositories that we can choose. So for example, OSF and social archive. So OSF is a repository and prepared service provided by Center for Open Science, which is a non-profit technology organization. And uh, OS, OSF prepared are designed for any researchers in any field to share their work. In addition to OSF, there are some other communities uh, support the sharing of prepens. For example, Social Archive is the community for social science, which have uh, partnered with OSF prepens. So if you create a repository that stores all of your, um, of your materials there, then you can easily um, upload your your data and your final um, your prepend to social archive. 
And there are many good reasons to upload our preprints. For example, um, the preprints uh, can be cited in this stage, even if it's not published yet. And so after I upload and share my preprints, it can increase the visibility and also a concrete evidence of um, your writing when, uh, when before and or after you submit your, your uh, manuscripts. And it's also very useful for helpful for early career um, researchers because um, we may want to uh, apply for jobs. And during this process, the preprint is a good evidence to show your research ability, even if it's not reviewed yet. So um, in today's presentation, I covered of those elements about how to make our work reproducible and how to make uh, uh, our Markdown repository for paper writing and research sharing. So research convenient means we include test data and code all together, and we uh, work on data analysis and visualization in our Markdown, and also um, using Git and GitHub for version controls to collaborate and keep track our changes. And after we finish our manuscripts, we can share it, um, share the preprints, with everyone. So just a quick summary of um, the, the points that I have been, uh, mentioned. So first is reproducible research. And um, once we uh, conduct the practice of re reproducible research, then we can um, enhance our research credibility and also science progress by sharing analytical processes. And this is quite different from the conventional way of doing research because uh, in a conventional way, people usually just provide the final um, output without any like details about how they analyze their data. So once we make uh, take the open sense approach to make our data open, and also methods and the final um, publication open, then other researchers, they can easily inspect your code and also they can try your uh, data. So today I introduced the workflow, uh, workflow I have been using and this is very practical and easily learned and I, highly recommend it. And it's also, um, you can also use it for other um, pieces of writing, not just limited to academic um, situation. For example, you, if you have data and you want to do some data um, analysis or visualization, you can always take this approach to make your um, like final report reproducible. So this is um, my presentation today, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, you can contact me by emails or Twitter. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay. So um, should we open for some questions? Uh, would anybody like to ask uh, something that um, maybe they're struggling with or something that maybe that wasn't clear? Um, I think what I'd like to ask is, um, when you're writing, let's say, the first draft of your manuscript or such, and you can output that to Word, right? And then when you share that with your supervisor, for example, who has corrections and suggestions, um, you know, in Word, you can accept those changes. But how do you do that in R Markdown? Do you have to manually go back into your R Markdown document and make those changes by hand? 
Okay, so there are a couple ways you can um, do this. So if, for example, if my co-authors, they made uh, changes directly in our Markdown in their computer, then after that, they can uh, push, they can commit their changes and push it to GitHub. Then what I have to do is just um, download it from GitHub. So I will uh, open my R, uh, R Studio and open my R Markdown and then click on uh, pool. So like right. this. Okay. Yeah, pool. And then you will, uh, it will automatically download every changes and yeah, replace my, my files. Okay, so in my computers. So um, sometimes you you not have conflicts when you use Git and GitHub. So for example, if both of you, like you and your author, all added um one on this the same documents, for example, on the same line of code, and like they they made some changes, you also made some changes, and once if they upload their changes. And later you want to pull it or you want to save it into your computer, and then you will see a, a conflict message because um, you are on Markdown, your your local computer, the it, it cannot identify which changes you want to save. So in that situation, you need to uh, fix the conflicts. And it, you can easily done it. Uh, you can easily make it uh, in your R Markdown file when you click on the Git button and it will show you the conflicts. Then you can just solve it over there. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Um, but then, you know, usually, like in, in the old way, you might want to discuss those changes with your colleague or your supervisor. And, mm -hmm. um, and so if, if you pull their yeah. changes, then you didn't get a chance to discuss it. It already re overwrites. Maybe you know. Maybe you don't agree yeah. with their yeah. change. Right? Yeah, but but you can you can still change it if you don't agree okay. it agree okay. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, when you when you click on pull. That means you just download everything to your um, local computer that will um, overwrite your current file. So if you feel you don't like it, you can you can also change it later. Okay, yeah. great. So normally we will have discussion before make um, before making any any substantial changes. Yeah. Good. Okay. So I was just looking at the chat. Um, uh, so Eva says that for collaboration, there's also a track down package that allows to edit text only of an RMD document, and it uses Google Docs. So that's interesting. I hadn't heard of that before. Um, yeah. um, then Median asks, uh, you had no problem later with the journals, or it depends on the journal? And also, how does it work with the page inline numbers? Okay. Uh, so, I mean, after you mean uh, after I upload my preprints, so I think there is no problem with the journals because I think it's the right that it's the right of authors that you can always save your preprints at any stage of your um, writing process like before submitting to uh, the journals or after that you can always update your prepens so the difference is um so your prepens you you don't have this kind of um publisher uh formatting you only have the for example you only have the publisher formatting uh, in your published paper like this but in your prepens it's just like um plan Planned uh, formatting without those um, features, you will see uh, this is a prepend. So I think at any stage of your writing, you can always have uh, prepends and you have the right to upload it. There is no problem with the publisher. 
And so for what is another question? How does it work with page in line numbers? So uh, so page in line in line numbers, I think um, I use a template that templates um, normally will have these kind of inline numbers. So uh, I think I don't have any issues with that. It's just, a, um, so usually in my work, uh, Word documents, you can specify this in your YAML header. And here I use a template um, from our tool package. And in that template, it creates inline numbers automatically. Um, okay, so when you have, um, um, I was looking at this template, for example, you show the CLS file for the Journal of Archaeological Science. Um, if you want to change the journal, then mm -hmm. you can just easily change that CLS file and then the maybe the formatting will look a little bit different for the authors and such but that's pretty well pain free just to change the template yeah yeah you oh. can sp specify your template yes right okay so um nicholas asks about where can he find the cls files and CLS you know files. c s l file i mean so it seems to me like if you go on Wikipedia, um, then they give you a link to GitHub and there's a huge collection of CSL files on GitHub where people have, you know, contributed to the community by writing these templates and uploading them. Okay, great. So, Let's see. Don't be shy, everyone, if there's something else that you think of. Um, so one question I have is uh, the art compendium. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought that that was itself like a like a container or yeah. that uh, it was uh, Ben had written right with a colleague or so, so do you first need to uh, create the container and then start your project inside? Yeah, I think firstly you will create our projects. So the R projects is um, where you can, um, it has everything there. You can create your R Markdown, R script, and also you can uh, create folders to uh, store your data, code, figures, or even um, like Word documents over there. So um, what you need to do is create our projects and and then just um, follow it. And but in my case, what I do is to uh, is use our tool package. So our tools will help you to automatically um, like create uh, our projects with those uh, elements, which is uh, designed for um, for academic paper writing. Yes, that's yeah. a, that sounds familiar now. Okay. Yes. So um, there are a couple of ways you can um, you can like uh, use package our package to, to do this and you can it will be easier for beginners but you can also like uh, create your own projects and uh, manage your data um, using your favorite um, ways yeah okay so um... Igor uh, says, uh, congratulations on your work. And can you talk about your learning curve? Because it sounds oh. like you said you didn't start using R until the second or third year of your PhD. So that's quite impressive. Yes. yes. So yeah, I, I started to use R in my uh, second or third year. And at the time, I just used R to do some simple calculation. Oh, oh. 
also we have a class like teach students to use R in our um, departments. So it's, uh, it's something that we, we need to learn. And at the time I just do simple calculation or making some um, plots that will be useful for uh, included in my paper. But at the time I, I haven't, I don't, I didn't have any idea to like how to write papers in our Markdown. And then um, my advisor then um, suggested me to start to think about that and write everything in our Markdown. So I would say my learning curve, um, I think if it's just a stage of use R to do um, calculation or data analysis or data visualization, it's it's okay, it's not that hard. But when um, I started to use our Markdown to write my papers, I feel um, it needs time to get used to it because everything is totally different. Like the way how you write your test and how you like uh, include your um, bibliography. Like traditional way, we just like use, um, for example, EndNote, like different um, systems programs, but in uh, our Markdown, I, use, I have to change those um, habits using big text and also write in this format, which is um, really, <laughs> I would say you need time to get used to it yeah. because everything is just different. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I will highly recommend it because I feel, um, I feel it saves, it saves me a lot of time to manage or organize the data and code because of those things, I can put it all together and uh, all the research materials related to these projects, they just like in a, just like in a single container, yeah. our projects. And yeah, every time when I need to update anything, I just go to the projects and update updated and because you can see uh, of the code data text they are kind of a bundle so if you change anything there then I mean you you don't have um keep check like if I have updated my figures or um if I update my my test because everything just will be uh, changed all together. So I feel it's an easier way to handle my research. And I also um, really um, like this approach, like open science approach, because I think the, the value of using um, our markdown is to make our research reproducible and for other people to inspect our data and code to increase the research credibility and also increase like um, equity. Like I say, everyone can access it. They don't have to pay for it. Yeah, so I just like this approach. Yeah, and I, you know, and I also think that um, it also opens the door to, you know, people considering that, you know, social sciences also can have a very high level of skill with data analysis, you know, so that's very exciting. Yeah, um, right. Um, okay, so. Uh, I think maybe one last uh, comment maybe we didn't touch on was that how wonderful it is with R Markdown that you can take your R Markdown file and then convert it to a presentation, right? Oh, so yeah. you're, you're saving time that way. You have your mm -hmm. figures already and maybe pieces of your text that you want to use or, or a little bit of the bibliography or a little bit of inline code or something. So it's another uh, um, way to save your time and, and mm -hmm. yeah, your resources. It's great. Right. Um, okay, how, how about writing your dissertation with R Markdown? Did you use Bookdown? 
Yes. Uh, because I use another approach to to graduate. I use three papers. So actually, my dissertation is based on three PhD papers. And what I use is just on markdown. I didn't use Bookdown because um, because I already have those individual uh, like projects for three um, PhD papers. So what I have done is um, um, I I think for my dissertation, I, I need to, uh, I still need to write in the introduction and conclusion section. So for those two sections, I create a markdown and write the test and also codes to include figures individually. So I have like, you can say I have five projects. One, three projects is for my PhD papers and two projects is one is for um, introduction, another one is for a conclusion and I need it as a um, PDF and then combine them together. Uh -huh. Yeah. So clever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think uh, that would be a whole nother learning curve to have to try to do that with book down. But, um, yeah, yeah, it will be quite complicated <laughs> when you have many chapters. Uh huh. Okay, good. Well, um, yeah. So I just like to, you know, let anybody know you're free to ask another question before we say good evening. And um, I know I look forward to following your work and seeing what. Uh, new things you do in the field of uh, anthropology. Thank you so, very much. So, okay. Um, then, thank you very much for, for sharing your time and your skill and your experience. And it's been a pleasure. Very inspiring, says Leslie. And that's true. So, thank you and good night. And um, I will send you the recording. Yeah, I'll stop recording now.